My guest is living the life she thought she never wanted. Wait till you hear how God changed her wanter. Teresa Swanstrom Anderson is here from Denver, Colorado. Teresa, you had wonderful ambitions for your life. I did. Tell us what you, <laughs> what you wanted to be when you grew up. My plan for my life was to get my master's and ultimately my doctorate in art history, move to Europe and be curator at some fantastic museum, preferably in Italy, because I'm sure that's a really easy job to get, and live an international life um, being a light in the art world. Wow, and, and you were on a roll. You yes. did get that art history degree. I did, yep. What happened? Well, I realized one day while sitting and doing my devotions, uh, I'm from Seattle originally, and my favorite spot to read and journal and pray was um, on a park bench overlooking the Space Needle. And I would just watch the hubbub of the city down below and one day the Lord was just kind of whispering the words more and bigger over my life and I didn't know what that meant. But as I was watching all the hubbub down below, the ferry boats um, kind of caught my eye off to the right. And as I was watching the ferries just so dreamily drift from downtown Seattle to the islands, I felt like God was saying, which life are you after? The really busy one where you're just turning your wheels or the one with intentionality going from one place to another. And so that day I realized, you know, I'd never consulted God in any of my plans or my dreams. I realized I was living a life for Him, but it's only amazing if it's built by Him. Interesting. Someone once said, if it's not God motivated and God directed, it's not God blessed. Absolutely. That's what He was saying to you. Yeah. How, what about me? Yeah. Now. A man named Ben yes. came into your life, and I think this is a really, obviously, a key component to what God would reveal to you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Ben. Ben and I worked together for a number of years, and he's eight years older than I, so it never occurred to either of us that it would ever be anything. And one day we realized that through our friendship, uh, we had fallen in love. <laughs> so we were engaged four months later and married four months after that. Now you come from a church tradition, from a true faith, household of faith. Yes. Uh, ben had a very different background. Yeah, he comes from um, a life of abuse and uh, he never graduated high school. He was homeless. Um, he eventually got his GED and went to college and ended up actually graduating with honors. But So he comes with familiarity of brokenness yes. and hardship yeah. and trauma. Mm -hmm. How did Ethiopia come into the picture? Yeah. We were not Italy. Not Ethiopia. Italy. <laughs> well, we were at an auction and we were not even engaged yet, but we knew that we were going to be married because, you know, it was a very short courtship. And uh, there was a black and white photograph of a little boy in Malawi praying. It just spurred a lot of conversation that night. And it was almost like the blinders just fell off of our eyes and we realized that's it. That We knew we wanted to live a life out of the ordinary. We just didn't know what that meant or what that bigger or more that the Lord was whispering on us really truly was. So we knew adoption from Africa specifically would be in our future. We just didn't know when. Wow. You have two very interesting acrostics, acronyms for fear. Yeah. And I want our viewers to see, I'm sure what you wrestled with, yeah. because your two greatest fears, are we ready for this, <laughs> were kids. You didn't want anything to do with kids. I did not like kids. Or Africa. <laughs> yeah. Kids in Africa. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. So the, take a look at this. Uh, where did you obviously wrestled with yeah. these options? Yeah. Fear is either forget everything and run, something was stirring in your heart, or face everything and rise. Yeah. How did God get you over the hump? <sighs> That's such a good question. I think ultimately just knowing that I was created for something and realizing that if I truly, truly trusted him, like I said that I have for many years, doesn't he, hasn't he created me for something? Hasn't he done more than just for me in my mother's womb physically, but also the insides? So even though I was scared of children and scared of Africa, he <laughs> knew that I was made to be those kids' mom. 
and he wasn't giving me my dread. He wasn't like chuckling and elbowing Jesus up on, <laughs> in heaven. Let's see how badly like, yeah. we can really shake her up. Yeah, no, he no, knew no. already that uh, I was made for this. Let's mention too, that in your earlier school years, your family had been in Guatemala yeah. with poverty and desperation and guerrilla fighters, yeah. a real threat through those mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So there was some preparation evident. Absolutely. Well, wait till you see <laughs> the, the not dreamed come true. Don't go away. <laughs>